Hello, my name is Kerioth, and today we are going to talk about a couple of bits of really good news. The first one being that there are now beta rules for pretty much everything Adeptus Custodius related. So, Forge World has long had a really nice variety of Adeptus Custodius stuff, and it's been kind of a shame that it's not been available for 40k. That has now changed. There are now beta rules for everything. I mean, 12 new units, so the different dreadnoughts, the different like hover vehicles, you've got the flyer, there's uh, all the stuff like the Aquilan Terminators and the Sagittarium Guard. Essentially, all of that stuff now has beta rules for Warhammer 40k, which is genuinely fantastic because there's such a nice variety of units available to custodies, and yet a significant portion of them just simply weren't available for 40k. There's also the fact that, to be honest, some of the stuff for the 40k version of Custodius is felt a little bit lacking compared to 30k. Like, the vehicle side of things, Land Raiders roll very well, but when you've got these fancy hover tanks available for 30k, it kind of is a bit garbage when you can't use them in 40k. That has now changed. And instead of just having just the standard Contempt of Dreadnought, which again, it kind of felt a little bit like, shouldn't they have something a bit more than this? Shouldn't it at least be a bit more fancy than this? The fact that you can use the, uh, the Forge World Dreadnoughts is really, really good. All of the stuff looks really nice, so being able to use it in both systems, absolutely perfect, dead on. So it'll be interesting to see what you what you guys make of the beta rules. Uh, I'll put a link in the description to where you can get them from. Um, nothing bad about this, I don't think. Not Nothing bad at all. All just good news. And uh, they have also, funnily enough, mentioned a brand new unit in the beta rules. The uh, Venetari Custodians which are the flying lads that you've been looking at, that uh, were discovered yesterday when someone at Forge World, I assume, accidentally put the wrong image in the banner rotation for the stuff that you see when you look at the custodies on Forge World, which was a nice way to drop that reveal. I'm assuming completely unintentional. I don't know whether they've moved this article up on Warhammer Community because of that, or whether it was always planned to go live today. I'll be honest, I suspect it wasn't planned to go live just yet, but... I mean, I'm not going to complain. I really like these guys. I, I said yesterday I really like them, and to be honest, I've seen a lot of references to Flash Gordon, which is pretty funny, but there is something about the overall design. The only thing I think I'd change on reflection is the heads. I'd quite like to see helmets, not not bare heads with like cybernetics in them. I, I would much prefer to see actual full-on helmeted guys, but to be honest... That's something that you can easily change yourself. That's something you could head swap out, no problem. The actual design of them I really like. I really like the jump packs. They're very over the top and ostentatious, but then again, it, it they're custodies, so of course they are. All of their stuff is very over the top and ostentatious. And to be honest, they're going to make some amazing raptor conversions for my Emperor's children, which, let's face it, is the most important thing. We also have some... Data sheets, so new character data sheets, and uh, these are for the the kill team starter sets, the uh, Theta Seven Acquisitus and Stan's Disciples. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at the Tech Priest Manipulus first. Again, ridiculous model. I really like it. It's creepy as hell. The whole finger in front of the mouth thing is really off. He's a chunky lad as well, but that's fine. Um, so. He's a new HQ choice for the Adeptus Mechanicus, which is good because I don't think you guys really have enough choice at all for HQs, to be honest. Um, and these are his stats. So he has a movement of 6 inches, weapon skill 3, ballistic skill 3, strength 4, toughness 4, wounds 4, attacks 3, leadership 8, and a 2 plus save. And also a 5 plus invulnerable save. He has an Omniscient Staff, which is obviously a melee weapon, strength plus 2, AP minus 1, damage 2. And also, as they point out, an additional D6 attacks from their Mechadendrites. And they also have the Galvanic Field, which I really like the look of this. So at the start of your movement phase, this model can choose to bolster either his warriors or his warriors' weapons. So bolster the warriors until the start of your next movement phase. Add one inch to the move characteristic of Frenzy Forge World units that start their move within six inches of any models using the bolster warriors' ability. And add one to advanced rolls and charge rolls made for friendly Forge World units that are within six inches of any models using the bolster warriors' ability when the roll is made. Nice. And bolster weapons. Until the start of your next movement phase, this model cannot move for any reason. And the ranges of ranged weapons friendly Forge World units are armed with are increased whilst they are within 6 inches of any models using the bolster weapons ability. 
if the weapon has an unmodified range characteristic of 24 inches or more, increase its range by 6 inches, otherwise increase its range by 3 inches. I quite like that. They, they kind of gives almost like a, an implanted, entrenched kind of feel to uh, to that ability. Or alternatively, you know, <laughs> making it one move quicker. But I, for some reason, I quite like the flavour of the uh, bolster weapons. It's it's interesting. And there is also a uh, Master of Machines ability. At the end of your movement phase, this model can repair a single friendly Forge World or Questor Mechanicus model within three inches, but not itself. If the model being repaired is a Forge World model, it regains D3 lost wounds, or if it is a Questor Mechanicus model, it regains one lost wound. A model may not be the target of the Master of Machines ability more than once per turn. Also points out healing D3 wounds per turn, so that's nice. Yeah, I quite like this guy. I like the abilities and I really like the model. It's also obviously ripe for converting and creating your own funky tech priest. So, yeah, like it. Then there is the, the Kellamorph. I'm assuming I am pronounced that correctly. Kellamorph. Kellamorph. Either way. Either way. I do like the fact that they pointed out not a leader within the Gene Stealer cult so much as an inspirational figure who uh, naturally draws others of their kind to their side through heroic deeds in battle. So it's an elite's choice, not an HQ choice. That's an in, that's I think to be honest quite a good distinction because there's been quite a lot of Gene Stealer characters revealed. It was I th it was kind of looking like it was going to get oversaturated, but having them be properly spread out amongst the different roles I think is definitely the way to go because otherwise it's like here's a bunch of HQ choices. What are you going to do? Um, so he has a six inch move, weapon skill three, ballistic skill two plus, uh, strength three, toughness three, wounds four, attacks three, leadership eight, five plus save. So armed with a cultist knife for melee, <laughs> as if you'd get him into melee when he's got three guns. Um, the three Liberator auto stubs, in fact. Auto stubs? Which, for some reason, has a revolver style chamber. Anyway, um, so yeah, <laughs> equipped with no fewer than three Liberator auto stubs. So 12 inch range, pistol two for the type, a strength four, AP minus one, damage two. And there's also Gunslinger, which I like. Oh, five plus vulnerable save, nice. Uh, this model can target enemy characters even if they are not the closest enemy unit. Good, I like that, nice and flavorful. In addition, each time this model hits an enemy with a pistol weapon, it can immediately make one additional hit roll against that target using the same weapon. These bonus hit rolls cannot themselves generate any further hit rolls. I like that, that's nice. That's a fun little ability for that character. That's cool. And uh, <laughs> as if a, as if a Callum Kellamorph? I'm just going to go for Kellamorph. Ability to blaze away with anything up to 12 shots. Wasn't really awesome enough. Love it. In the highly likely event that they gun down an enemy in the process, they'll inspire nearby cultists with their dashing display of skill and daring do. Excellent use of the word daring do there. Heroic deeds, heroic inspiration. Add three to cult ambush rolls made for this model. In addition, if this model kills any, any enemy models with its ranged weapons, then until the end of the phase, reroll hit rolls of one for friendly cult infantry units whilst they're within six inches of this model. I, yeah, I like these two. I like these two a lot. I have to admit, I'm feeling the Kellamorph a little bit more, but I don't know if that's just because he's a gunslinger with three guns, to be honest. I mean, the abilities are fun and it feels very flavorful, um, but also just look at the guy. He's cool. I like him. So yeah, a load of new rules for studies, some data sheets for the, uh, the characters out of the kill teams, not bad. Not a bad haul for a Friday. What do you reckon of these things? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you're a Custodius player with a bunch of Ford Wheel stuff, let me know how happy you are and what you think of the rules, whether you think they are appropriate for what the units are. Um, the Community Spotlight, I'm really hoping to try and get out today. Uh, you've sent me so many submissions and it's really awesome, but I like because you keep sending me all this cool stuff, I want to make sure that that... I want to make sure that it's a... Uh, it kind of does does all the stuff justice and uh, I'm, I'm not in the best of health at the moment so it's taking a little while for me to get it to a point where I'm happy with it but uh, as soon as it's done it will be out um, I'm hoping today but if it is a little bit delayed it's only because I, I want it to be good you know I want to be able to show off your stuff properly and not just some half-assed things so if there is a bit more of a delay that's why um, but yeah let me know what you think of all this stuff in the comments down below I will See you for the next video. Feel free to click all the things if you want to, uh, or don't click them if you don't. It is entirely up to you. Thank you very much for watching. 
and see you next time. Toodaloo.